Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mihir Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn what is goods and service tax. Now, this is a new video series that we are going to start, okay, which will cover up each and every topic which are related to goods and service tax. Uh, it can be used for all the streams, okay. It can be used for all the different, you know, classes which are there from BCom to BMS to BBI to BFM to BAF and many more. Okay. Now, if there arises a question as to what is GST, then this is a must video. Okay. In this video, we are going to cover up the concept learning of what is GST with some basic problem sums. Okay. Once this particular video gets done, okay, once you have a basic idea of what is GST, then we are going to cover up all other topics, okay, whatever important topics are there. Again, from the exam point of view of all, okay, you have semester six for BCom, for BMS, for BBI, okay. Those who ever have, you know, six sem or even in your fourth, fifth sem, may uh, what is GST or indirect tax, as you say. Each and every topic will be covered up under this particular subject. It will be made in very precise manner. The rules and everything will be noted down. So you just have to refer the rules and you all can guarantee solve each and every sum which will be based on this particular subject. So let us see what is GST. Okay, we will be learning about few concepts under GST. And then we'll be just taking up two small problem sums and in order to just to understand how GST actually works. So let us see how uh, and what is GST. Okay, now very first question that arises is what is GST? Now it is written that it is a tax which was introduced in India on 1st July 2017. GST stands for goods and service tax. It is supposed to be a common tax for all the goods and services in India. Okay, now when you look at the basic meaning of what is GST, so it will be said that GST means any tax on supply. Now, this is a very important term on supply of goods and services or both except taxes on supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Okay, that, that's the definition which has been given by the ICAI and the Income Tax Department or the Income Tax Act. Now, it means that whenever you supply either goods or services or both on the value of supply, GST will be charged or whoever is supplying, okay, anything which has been supplied on that particular thing or service, okay, the GST will be charged. Now, in that meaning itself, they have also given you something called except some tax on supply of alcoholic liquor. So now in GST, there are few things on which GST is not applicable. Okay. When we talk about goods and services, it means it covers up everything which is available uh, in India. But there are few things on which GST is not applicable. So the scope of GST, okay, GST is levied on all goods and services except the following. Number one. Alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Why? Because on alcoholic liquor, we have state excise duty and VAT, okay, which is already continuing. So you cannot have another GA, uh, another tax implied on it. Second, on all your petroleum products, because again, under that, we have your central excise duty and VAT. Third, real estate sector, because it is subjected to stamp duty by the state government. Okay, uh, however, uh, in this year onwards, okay, however, in a uh, year or two onwards, even GST is applicable on your property when you do your registration. Okay, and lastly, it is said that tobacco because it is subjected to GST as well as central excise duty. So, then these are the few things which you have to remember okay, on these particular stuff that's alcoholic, liquor, petroleum, and tobacco. Uh, direct GST won't be applicable because there's already some tax already included on it. So that's like the scope of GST. Next comes what are the various types of GST? Now your GST is broken up in few types. Okay. So we have CGST known as central GST. SGST is known as state GST. UTGST is nothing but the union territory GST and IGST is integrated GST. 
okay now cgst and sgst or, or utgst they are applicable when you have local sales that is sale within the same state or the same union territory for example if the supplier is from mumbai and the buyer is also from uh, any part of maharashtra okay let's say from is from pune now mumbai and pune they both come under the same state if it is from the same state it will be called as local sales and here gst will be split up in in the form of cgst and sgst okay but if you have the supplier in mumbai which is a part of maharashtra and the purchaser is in goa which is another state altogether in that case we'll have one direct the uh, gst which will be known as integrated gst that is interstate sales or sales which is outside state so we have two types of you know two uh, important types that you have to remember one when the sale and the purchase or the entire transaction is done within the state then gst gets split up in the form of cgst and sgst or utgst but when you have two different states involved then we only have one uh, gst which is integrated gst okay so these are the two types of gst which you have to keep in mind okay now let us take a example okay now under the types of sales when we said local sales and interstate sales okay so for example um now your sales have been divided into two parts we have one local sale within the state and one we have interstate sales okay now as we said if we have local sales okay the gst that will be charged will be cgst and sgst and if you have interstate sale then we'll have igst now this example says that let's say we have 1 lakh ka sale done okay we have 1 uh, rupees 1 lakh ka sale which has been done so in either case in either case if it is within the state 1 lakh or if it is in two different state again 1 lakh if it and let's say the gst which has been charged is 5% that 5% will get divided under cgst and sgst in the form of 2.5% each on the sale of 1 lakh rupees so that will be 2500 2500 which comes to 1 lakh 5000 this is in the case when you have local sales but what if uh, we have interstate sale then we'll have directly we don't have to divide the gst in two different parts so we'll have directly 5% igst which comes to 5000 of 1 lakh total up to 1 lakh 5000 only so now if you look carefully if you look carefully the gst the total amount of gst that needs to be pay it will be equal no matter from whichever state you are the total will be same the only thing you have to remember is that if it is within the same state then your gst gets split in two parts half amount goes to the central government and the half goes to the state government but if you have an interstate then the entire amount goes to the central government okay now we will take up two problems sum in order to understand what is gst how you need to calculate it who is liable to pay gst okay and what will be like the total amount of uh, amount that the buyer needs to pay once gst is charged okay so we'll take up two problem sums to understand that so let us start number 1 the first question reads out as mr a of pune supplied goods and services for rupees 2 lakhs to mr b of mumbai now very first thing pune and mumbai they come from the same state that is maharashtra so the sgst and gst rate on supply of goods and service is 9% each and igst is supposed to be 18% on that same goods which have been supplied they are given you a common rate so 18 is the igst rate and it will get split up in 9 9% each under cgst and sgst now since mumbai and pune they both are in the same state the gst that will be applicable will be cgst and sgst so we'll have to take 9% each they have asked us to find number 1 the total price charged by mr a mr a is the person who going to supply and who is liable to pay gst okay there are two things that we need to find so let us see one by one so we have a, a, we made a small table where we have particulars and values in rupees now the value of goods which was supplied was 2 lakhs so number 1 we'll write supply of goods and services the amount was 2 lakhs now on this 
amount we have to charge gst which is 18% but since they are from the same state we are going to break that 18% in the form of 9% each for cgst and sgst and that amount gets added to the total value of your product so whenever you are going to buy anything which includes gst gst gets added to the price and then you have to pay the lump sum amount so we add cgst 9% of 2 lakhs which comes to 18000 and we again add SGST 9% which again comes to 18,000. So the total price charged by Mr. A will be 2,36,000. That's the total price charged by Mr. A to Mr. B. That's the first question. Who is, now it's the second one, who is liable to pay GST? Now as per the definition, GST is always charged on the supply of goods and services. So the person who actually supplies the goods and service, he is liable to pay the tax. However, he doesn't pay from his pocket. He will collect the money from the customer and then he will pay it to the government. But originally the liability of GSC, if you get a question who is liable to pay the tax, the supplier will always be liable to pay the tax. Okay. But he doesn't have to pay from his pocket. He will collect it from the customers and then pay to the government. So if the question of who is liable, Mr. A is liable to pay the tax since he is the supplier of goods and services. Okay. So that was the basic concept about how GST is charged and who is liable to pay the GST. That was the first problem sum just to understand the concept. Now we'll take up the second sum. Uh, Mr. M of Mumbai supplied goods and services of rupees 24 lakhs to Mr. S of Solapur. So, uh, M is supplying goods to S, same state. Mr. M purchased goods of 20 lakhs in addition paid GST of 9 and SGST of 9% from Mr. C. So, now there are two conditions here. Number one, M is supplying goods. And in order to supply that goods, he had bought some raw material from somewhere else. So there are three parties included in this, okay? Find number one, the total price which was charged by Mr. M for supply of goods and services. Okay, that's very simple. Now, if I want to find the value of or the price charged by Mr. M, we'll have to first note down what is the value that he has supplied. And on that, we will be adding our CGST and SGST since they are from the same state. So particulars and values in rupees. The value of goods which was supplied was, you know, uh, so we write that the value charged by Mr. M to S for supply of goods and service was 24 lakhs rupees. On the 24 lakhs, we'll have to add up your CGST, which was 9%. So 24 lakhs ka 9% will come to 2 lakh 16,000. Same way we need to add up SGST of 9%, which is again 2 lakh 16,000. The total amount that is charged by Mr. M is 24 lakhs plus 2 lakhs 16 plus 2 lakhs 16 which comes to 28 lakhs uh, 32,000 28 lakhs 32,000 that's the total amount or total price which was charged by Mr. M okay to Mr. S that was number one second who is liable to pay GST Mr. M or Mr. S now as I told you the person who supplies the goods and services he is the person who has who is liable so in our case in from m and s m is the person who has supplied s is the person who has bought so b mr m is liable to pay gst okay third find the net liability of gst so now now this net liability usually appears when the supplier is selling the goods in one side and he's also purchasing from somewhere else the raw material in that case whatever he has purchased okay whatever tax he has purchased on purchase he can set it off okay now let us see how to do that so uh, we write mr m is liable to pay gst as under particulars we have cgst and sgst number one we need to find output tax output tax is nothing but the tax which was collected from supplying the goods so we can see here he had collected 2 lakh 16,000 each from Mr. S okay why when he supplied goods of 24 lakhs so we like there 2 lakh 16 2 lakh 16 under CGST and SGST from this output tax you will have to subtract input tax credit that is the tax that was paid on purchase of goods and service 
It is said that Mr. M had purchased goods of 20 lakhs and he had to pay tax of 9% each. So 20 lakhs into 9% is 1 lakh 80 thousand. So that goes under CGST as well as in SGST. So when he paid tax, he will set it off with the amount that was collected through output tax. So only the difference which is available, okay, that is 2 lakh 16 minus 1 lakh 80, whatever is the difference available, that is the only liability that he needs to, you know, pay to the government. So the net liability of Mr. M will become 36,000 each so total of 72,000 where we have 36,000 will go to CGST and 36 will go to the state or the SGST okay so this were the basic concept of GST okay how GST usually works okay who has to pay GST who is liable to pay GST and what is net liability okay this is just a basic introductory topic that we had covered up um, now onwards okay whatever we have done these are just basic number basic sum okay not uh, just basic concept now we'll have actual sums and chapters based on how to find the value of supply okay how to find the liability there are individual chapters that needs to be covered up and each and every chapters will be covered up okay so i hope everyone have understood the basic concept of gst stay tuned for other videos which will be coming up very soon which will cover up each and every topic in detail with that, we will be ending this video here. I hope everyone have understood it. Thank you.